Hello everyone and welcome back to Whimsy Creek Art. Alright, today's video is going to be a fun one. So here are the supplies. We've got Floetrol and then we have Master's Touch Paint today. We have Titanium White, Pink, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Pale Blue, Turquoise Green, Viridian, Magenta, Violet, and Yellow Deep. So those are the colors we're going to be working with today. And this is with the Master's Touch Fine Art Studio Acrylics. All right, so here we're going to get to mixing our colors. Okay, so what we have here is some cups and some regular old popsicle sticks and we're going to start mixing up the colors and we're going to do one part paint to three parts Floetrol. So I use about two parts Floetrol if it's one of the thinner paints like a craft paint, but if it's a thicker paint like this Master's Touch is pretty thick. Here, let me show you. See, it's a pretty thick paint. And so we're going to do one part paint to three parts Floetrol. And then we're going to check the consistency and we might put a little bit of water. We may not need any water. Then we check it afterwards. So I have a couple of videos on how I mix my paint, my consistency of my paint and all that. So you, I'm going to go ahead and link below the videos on how to mix the paint. But I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of each of these colors right now off camera and I'll show you the consistency we're going for. Alright, now I have all the paints mixed up and I ended up having to put about a teaspoon of water in each color. And so we have a pretty good consistency here. And what we're looking for is for it to run off the stick but kind of sit across the top not sink right away and I do have other videos on specifically the consistency of paint and so I did all the colors and white that I had gone over before on the master's touch paint the one color I did add in is this lighter purple and I just did that by adding equal parts of the white and the violet and so I mixed equal parts, parts of white and violet to get a little bit of a lighter purple. And so that's what we have. And so I'll get going. And this is top 20 paint pours of 2020. And they're in no specific order. Just going to go ahead and get down my favorite 20 paint pours. Right, now we're just about ready to pour. We need to add a little bit of silicone. So what we're gonna do is we take spot on treadmill oil, and this is 100% silicone oil. And you can use whatever silicone oil you're using. And so we wanna just put it very little. You don't wanna go overboard with your silicone. So this cup's probably two thirds, or probably three quarters of the way full, a little more. So we wanna put probably two drops in this one. And that's it, no more than that. And you can go ahead and mix that up. I don't really mix it, you know, super, super well, but that about that much, and then that's good. All right, now I'm going to get silicone in each of the colors, but not the white. All right, so we're not going to go in any specific order. We're just going to do my top 20 paint pours of 2020, and there are so many more than 20 different techniques. I've just chosen my top 20, and we're not going to go in any specific order. All right, we're going to start out easy, and we're going to start out with a dirty pour. And right now, I'm just pouring the cups, the paint in the cup, layering them in, really no specific order, kind of going for the brighter kind of primary colors for this one. And for all 20 paint pours today, I am going to be using six by six inch ceramic tiles just to keep it, keep it a cohesive look 
for all 20 paint pours. And you can get these ceramic tiles at your local Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, I don't do anything to the surface, but maybe clean them with a little bit of alcohol if they need it. All right, so we've layered the cup. If this is a three ounce cup, I've got about, oh, two, two and a half ounces in the cup. I am now pouring it on the surface and wow, those cells just pop right up. And that's just with using two drops in each color. Notice I put my hand here at an L shape and this L shape kind of catches the paint as I lean it to each side. So I'm going to lean the uh, tile over and kind of get it to the edge, get it to the corner and then a little bit back to the center, not completely back to the center, but somewhat. So back to the center and then on to the next corner. And I do that for all four corners. And notice I kind of use my hand, my fingers to kind of help it. I kind of pull it along. That kind of helps it get to all the way to that corner. Now I'm pulling that gravity of that paint back to the center a little bit. And that is a dirty pour. So that is our first pour of our 20 paint pours of 2020. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a torch. I'm only about oh, four, six, four to six inches away from the tile. I do not have my flame right on the tile. You don't want to scorch your paint. And I'm just using a creme brulee torch or a but butane small uh, kitchen torch. All right, here's a close up. Let's look at that. Wow, quite a difference. Uh, we've got a variety of cells. That's kind of nice to have the smaller cells and the larger ones, a little bit of lacing. And here are some close-up shots of the same pour. All right, and for our next pour, we're going to put down a little bit of base paint, some of that white that we mixed up with no silicone, and we're going to put that down as a base layer here. And this is our second paint pour of 20. I'm just going to go ahead and spread this out. I have sped this up a little bit to just kind of, you know, it's kind of the boring part, spreading that white paint out. Now that we've got all the paint spread out, now we're going to go ahead. This is a napkin ring paint pour, or you can do it with toilet paper rolls, or uh, some people call this an open cylinder paint pour. But I like to use these uh, plastic Dollar Tree uh, napkin rings. They're in over by the party section, party supplies, kind of the wedding supply section of the Dollar Tree. And you get six of them for a dollar. They're used for a napkin ring and they work great for this technique uh, open cylinder or napkin ring paint pour okay so I'm just taking you don't need much for this technique you're gonna have negative space and that's that whatever base color you use background color and it does not have to be white you're gonna see in later uh, pours for this video I do not use white as my negative space color but this one we are using white so uh, notice I'm not pouring them in. I'm kind of just using the popsicle stick to get a little bit of paint in there because you don't need much. Now I'm getting it closer to the corner and I'm slowly feathering that napkin ring up just to let a little bit of paint out, but not all of it at once. So I'm kind of just feathering it across the camp canvas, pulling, or not canvas, tile in this case. And you could use tile canvas for any of these techniques. They work for any of them. I'm just using tile because that's what I had on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another little bit of torch. Ooh, you see the cells pop up right away with that torch. 
Okay, now I'm going to tilt the tile a little bit. Try to get that paint to come over to that other corner a bit more. But I don't want to tilt it too aggressively because I do like the cells and that little bit of lacing I have through that white. That's what we paint pores call that uh, little delicate lacing across that white. So I am just trying to tilt it a little but not too aggressively. And I'm just trying to get the paint to that corner a little bit more. And you'll notice here in just a second, I'm going to grab here an aquarium tubing. I use aquarium tubing to blow out the edges. You can use a straw or whatever you have on, on hand. I like to use the aquarium tubing because it's reusable and you can use it over and over and over again. It's very affordable. And uh, I can direct the flow a little bit better of the air. So I have got this vertical with the tile. You don't want this right horizontal straight on, straight at the cam or the canvas or tile. You want this vertical with it and you're just lightly feathering. You can see I'm just going back and forth, back and forth while I'm just real lightly blowing the air through. So I'm going to blow that paint pretty aggressively here in the corner trying to get it towards the corner. All right, now I like this because it gives it a more organic shape. And not all paint pores have I done this. You'll see later in this video, there's a couple where I do not blow out the edges. It's just kind of whatever vibe I'm going for for that particular painting. And here is a close-up of the final product and some close-up shots. You'll notice each pour I do, I'll do the technique, explain it, some tips, and then I'll give you a close-up of it and a couple of close-up shots so you can see how it turns out. And that's kind of how I do all my videos. I show you the technique, then I do a close-up video of it, and then some close-up shots. And each one on this video, I do that as well. All right, third paint pour out of our top 20 of 2020. All right, so this one's going to have a blue negative space. And this is going to be what I call a central swipe. There's so many different names, and many different techniques have multiple names. Throughout the years, they've gotten different names and such. So I just call this a central swipe. But what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my palette knife. I just have these plastic cheap palette knives from the Dollar Tree. And I'm spreading my paint, my base color. And you can use any base color. When we're talking negative space, it does not have to be white or have to be black. It can be any color. We're just negative space, meaning leaving a little bit of that base, that background color showing, not covering it completely. And so I'm getting this spread about, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some colors down the middle. Again, some of the brighter primary colors. And at the beginning of this, we've got named all the different colors we're using today. It's a little bit of that magenta. And this uh, green color, this is a real pretty color. And this Master's Touch paint is new to me. So I really enjoyed using it each technique um, really did well with the Master's Touch paint. I think it is a good versatile paint for all different paint pouring techniques. It is a little bit on the thicker side, but uh, if you get it the right consistency and get it down to where you want it, it really worked well. And so I'm just getting a thin layer of paint down the center of the tile. I'm not really wanting a lot. That's why I'm using my popsicle stick to just get a little bit of paint. And so I'm going to finish it off here with this real nice bright yellow. And uh, you can do a swipe in many different ways of doing a swipe. This is the first of several swipes I'm going to go ahead and show you in the top 20 paint pours. And this I just call a central swipe. So I use these plastic paint uh, palette or these palette knives because they've got a real nice, they're not very heavy, they're super light. So for a swipe, they work real well. So just let the knife kind of guide, glide across the top. You don't want to put too much pressure in it. Just barely let it kind of glide across the top. And then after each time I swipe through the colors, I am wiping it off. And off camera, I've got a rag and I'm just wiping the surface of the palette knife and then going in again for another one. And I'm trying to grab um, a variety of colors. So I kind of bring 
yellow down one side, purple down one side. I don't want all the yellow in one spot and all the purple. So I'm trying to kind of break that up as I'm pulling them down. And I'm just going about halfway on some, three quarters on some, kind of giving it a variety there as well. The swipe technique does do some really nice lacing. So if that's what you're going for, a lacing look, it does do lovely lacing with the swipe technique. So here we're just finishing off, swiping that last little end little bit. And so that is, and I'm going to go ahead and fix this bald spot here with the edge of the palette knife. That is a central swipe. I've also called, I've seen it called like a ghost swipe. I believe a ghost swipe is a little variation of this. Now torching again. Now remember not to get too close. You don't want to, you're just kind of heating or popping any air bubbles you might have. So here in the close-up, we can see that lacing really well. And it's just barely across the top, kind of delicate. That is real nice. All right, and for our fourth paint pour of our 20, for top 20 of 2020, is going to be what I kind of been calling a whimsy swipe. And the reason I call it this is I just kind of put the paint down all over and no real order, kind of just throw it down whimsically and all over. And then I'm just swiping in all directions. Uh, there is a central swipe. There's just an all over swipe where you swipe the whole thing. And there's many different types of swipes. And so this one, I just kind of have affectionately named it the whimsy swipe. But it's just a random swipe. And again, I'm just going to throw the colors down randomly all over, throw in some of these purples and a little bit of blues and that real pretty kind of turquoisey green color. And then I'm going to grab my palette knife. I'm going to use those plastic palette knives again from the Dollar Tree. I'm just lightly letting the palette knife, the weight of the palette knife, which it is a very light palette knife, just kind of glide across the top real carefully. I'm not trying to press down at all. Just let the weight of the palette knife glide across the top of the paint. And I am, if the paint isn't all the way to one edge, I'm just pulling it to the edge and then pulling it across randomly and kind of with whimsy. I'm this has been one of my favorite techniques lately. I've been really just enjoying different color combinations and trying out different directions and kind of going in swirls or diagonal or you can just wherever you feel. And if you get a spot you don't really like, swipe through it again, throw some more color down, swipe through it. Uh, you can also get your, I use the aquarium tubing or your straw and you can blow out some parts you don't like. So it's a very forgiving technique as well. So it's quite fun because you can just, you don't have to put a lot of thought into it and just kind of go with ever whimsy, whatever color you feel like, direction you feel like going. So it's been a real fun technique and it does create a good variety of different size cells and those, so that creates a nice good pleasing looking painting for the eye. It's nice to be able to see you know some of the real larger cells, some of the lacing, some of the small cells all in the same uh, art piece. I, I particularly personally enjoy that to see the larger cells, small cells lacing, kind of a variety in the same piece. It's kind of neat to see. And so this whimsy swipe does kind of create that. You get a good variety of lacing sale sizes. And so here again, I am just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a torch. But this time it's, it's not really doing much. I have already kind of 
made all the cells pop up that are going to pop up. Here in the corner, this green lacing. Ooh, that's really pretty across the top of that purple. This one kind of reminds me kind of mermaid vibe to it. Some mermaid colors. All right, and now for our fifth paint pour out of our 20. This is a blown flower, or what I like to call a whimsy bloom. And so I'm just putting some of the paint down in the middle, some of that violet and a little bit of the magenta. And I haven't put anything special in this paint. This is just like we mixed it up at the very beginning of this video, Floetrol paint and a tiny bit of water and just like two little drops of silicone. I would love to be able to take a Shelly Arts uh, course someday on her blooms, but for now, this is how I do my blooms without adding anything extra. I know with her blooms, there's a few other ingredients. So this is just with the paint I've already mixed up and have on hand. I'm taking that aquarium tubing and just blowing very gently right across the two colors and kind of throwing them like across the top of the white. And I'm trying to create almost, you know, like a flower petals. And this these can be done so many different ways. They can be just one bloom in the center. It looks really nice doing them a bloom in the corner with the petals, you know, from the center of the flower being in the corner of the canvas or tile. And you can do them also like a bunch of flowers, not just one on there. So they can be done many different ways. Quite a fun technique. Okay, for our number six out of 20, this is a bottle bottom paint pour. It kind of resembles a flower. And so I've laid a little bit of yellow paint down in the middle, kind of the middle of the flower. And I'm just kind of getting it kind of tilted around, kind of about the size of the bottom of my bottle. Now, this is a real tiny bottle that I was able to find. They've got all different size soda bottles, water bottles. And I just cut off the bottom and I'm laying it right there over the top of that yellow. Now I'm going to try to evenly in the middle so it goes down evenly, all different sides. I've got some of the blue and I'm just going to randomly layer some blues and greens first. And then I'm going to get to more some traditionally flower colors. Please excuse the paint there on my arm. I need to wash that off. <laughs> and so I'm just trying to get it straight into the center. And so it evenly goes down each edge of the paint, each edge of the bottle bottom. And I sometimes use Propel sports drink bottoms because they have multiple, they have six of the little knobs creating uh, more of a crevice for the paint to go down. So now putting down some of the magenta. And you can do this technique. And I mean, any of these techniques can be done with silicone or without silicone. And as you saw at the very beginning of this video, each of my colors do have silicone. So um, here you are going to see a few cells pop up. But I don't torch it. So then that created where not a ton of cells popped up. And I'm just alternating the colors back and forth, trying to get them evenly, but they kind of have a mind of their own. And so I'm trying to pay attention when I put down the next color, if the color before did go down 
one side a little bit too much. Maybe I'm going to try to even it out with this next color. But, I mean, you can't do too much. You just got to kind of get it as even as possible. After we get all the paint layered on here, then we're going to very carefully lift that bottle bottom. Now, that is slippery, so it is kind of hard to lift up. Make sure that you just lift it straight up and that you have kind of a landing spot for it. I've got a little tray off camera here. I'm going to lift it straight up and get it out of there. It's trying not to tilt it because then you will tilt paint off and kind of skew your the way it looks. Now I'm going to grab a clean popsicle stick here. And I'm going to take the popsicle stick through each of the what you can kind of call petals kind of create it more of the petal of a flower look. Now you can do this, sometimes I go just once down the center of each petal, sometimes I go down three times, just depends on what look you're going for. So any of these techniques, you can change them up and you can do it your way. That's what's so fun in the freedom with paint pouring is you can do it any way you really want. Uh, you don't have to use that popsicle stick down the center how I just did it. And each time I took the popsicle stick down each side of the petal, I did wipe it off and then put it back through clean again to do the next petal. So now I am tilting it, tilting it to each corner and kind of helping it there with my fingers. Once it, get, once it gets about an inch or so away from the corner, I'm just kind of helping it. It kind of helps it to squeeze it down there to the last little bit. Always check your edges. Always check your corners. They can be easily missed. And it's just so much easier to get them painted now than to have to go back and try to do it. And so each time I tilt to a corner, you'll notice I am somewhat tilting it back to the center, then on to the next corner, then back to the center, and then on to the next corner. Now with this technique, you don't want to tilt it too aggressively. If you tilt it too aggressively, you may slide it right off the edge. So you want to just very easily tilt it to each side. So here we go. That's kind of an abstract flower. And this is just a six by six ceramic tile. If you do have a larger canvas, you can kind of see the, uh, the, the whole definition of the flower a little bit more on a larger surface. But on these smaller uh, tiles, that looks kind of neat as well. All right, and for number seven out of 20, we have a flip cup. And a flip cup is a super easy, a great paint pour for beginners to do. I'm just going to, I have a three ounce cup. This is again a six by six inch tile. I'm going to get about two, two and a half ounces in this cup to get the whole surface. I'm just layering them randomly, and I'm going with some of these pastel colors. Uh, I haven't used too many of those that we mixed up here. And so I'm going to just layer them here with a little bit of the white. And now I've got about two, two and a half ounces. I'm going to take that tile, flip it over onto the top of the cup, and flip that cup over onto the surface. Now I'm going to lift this cup. I'm going to go off to the edge. I'm not going to go straight up. If I go straight up, it'll drip drips down in. Now you can take, see how I'm taking and it's coming out. And I'm trying to get some streaks across there, give a little bit more character. I'm taking the rest of the paint and I'm trying to just get it out on the corners. That will mainly come off the edge, so it's kind of ugly there. It's going to come off the edge, but it just helps get all that paint out and get it used up to get those corners covered. Now I gave it a little bit of torch, and you can torch it before you tilt it, or you can torch it after you tilt it. I torched it before I tilt it. You're going to see here in a second. I got much larger cells because now they're going to stretch out as I'm getting it to each corner, having my kind of my hands, my fingers help it to the edge, help it to the corner. 
And so I've ended up with some larger cells because I tilted it or I torched it before I tilted it. If I would have just went ahead and tilted it and then torched after tilting, I would have gotten a little bit smaller cells. So that's one thing with flip cups is you can torch it before tilting or torch it after. And that would be depending on what size of cells you're going for. Okay, our eighth paint pour out of 20 is going to be a bottle cap paint pour. And so this is going to be the last paint pour for this video. But right after this, I have another video coming out. And that's going to have number 9 through 20. In this video, we had how to mix up our paint and what colors we're using. And then 1 through 8. Next video, we'll have 9 through 20. Now, right here, I'm just spreading out the base layer. So this one's going to have quite a bit of that negative space, that base color still showing up. And uh, as I've said, you don't have to have negative space just being white or black. I'm using that aqua, this light kind of teal color as my negative space here. And then I'm going to take a bottle cap. And you can use a bottle cap. You can just use a small um, cup. You can use a bottle cap. You can use uh, anything just real small. You want a small amount of paint here. You're not going to want to put a lot down. I use a cap to a Gatorade is what I'm going to use. That's a nice size for this technique and this size of a tile. Take your bottle cap and you just want to take a little bit of paint on each of the popsicle sticks and drip a little bit down in that bottle cap. You don't want a ton, just enough for each of the colors. So I'm taking a variety of these blues and just, I don't want to pour it in there because I don't want a ton. Get a little bit of purple and uh, letting it just come off the end of the popsicle stick. And this is a real fun abstract look because you get a lot more of that negative space, which is real nice for the eye. Sometimes if the surface is just too busy and too full of um, like a, a dirty pour or flip cup with no negative space, isn't always the most pleasing. Sometimes it can be really, really nice and look great. But sometimes you want it this negative space. You're looking for a more of a solid color and then just a little bit of color going through it. And these bottle cap pours are great for that because you don't put all that much in the bottle cap. So now I flipped it over on the surface and now I'm going to drag it across the surface. And I am just feathering it up. This is something you're just going to have to practice is I'm dragging it across the surface. I'm just lifting it a little bit more and a little bit more. You don't want to let all of it go gushing. If you just lift it up, it'll all go gushing out at once. You want to just kind of feather it out as you're dragging it across the surface. And then I noticed the one corner didn't have too much paint. So I went ahead and took the bottle cap back to that edge and kind of just drug it off and gave it a little bit more paint for that edge. All right. So sometimes I blow those edges out. This particular one, I'm going for more of that minimal look. So I am not going to go ahead and blow it out. I do like kind of, it's already given itself kind of an organic look to it. It doesn't have straight edges that, and that's the reason I maybe would blow it out. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this one because I like just the minimal look without having too much there. All right, so thank you for joining me. And that is 1 through 8. In just a few minutes, 9 through 20 will be out.